Uh, and I think you know we, we, we are treated to more and more grisly examples of technology which at the same time are more and more revealing it seems to me and I just want to give two examples one uh, an article in a recent American magazine talked about online grieving or virtual bereavement and it actually and this was a, a sort of semi alternative magazine but a very big uh, mass uh, you know a, a very big circulation magazine and uh, in other words much better uh, to do it online when somebody loses someone, somebody, somebody's mother dies, or something like that, because you can be more open and free this way. You know, instead of being there, maybe putting your arms around that person and trying to trying to actually be there for them and support them, and you know, be physically present to them. Uh, I mean, this is just ghastly. I, I don't, I don't know. If, I don't know how you can put it another way. Another one that just jumped out at me, and I, I can't, I just think about it all the time, is a picture that I saw from a, uh, a Japanese nursing home. It's a picture of an elderly woman in a sort of box-like deal, and there's an opening by her face, and uh, it's a washing machine. She's in a washing machine. You, you push the button, and, and she's bathed with the, by a machine. No unpleasant human touch. One human doesn't bathe another. No, we got technology. It's just getting better and better. Well, that's that's neutral. That has something to do with who controls it or who. Uh, what else can you do with with that sort of thing, except dehumanize people even more and and move even faster to this to a point of uh, ever more massive. Uh, uh, estrangement and make make the society even more uh, desolate. So you have, and, I, and I'm not saying this is the entire factor, the entire thing, but and that's that's related to people that just snap and and uh, engage in a mass homicide, suicide. There's so much talk, especially in the United States, about terrorism. Oh, the terrorism. They're terrorists. We've got to empower the government more and more. Take away all our liberties. That's fine because they're terrorists out there. Well, the terrorists, uh, when you think about it, uh, they're, they're at the mall. They're at Virginia Tech. They're not. Uh, they're not Arabs that have come over here except 9/11. I mean, you know, really, that's the terrorism of daily life. That's the terrorism of modernity. A terrorism that uh, it'd be nice to find the healthy trends, the the uh, the positive directions. It's harder and harder to find one. Uh, I don't know why, you know, tragically, wh why will this not uh, continue to uh, become more commonplace and spread to countries that are not so far gone, like, like Finland? And I know this is not a perfect society, but of course not. But it's not, you have more to lose, but, but, the, but the direction is obvious if, if every country goes in this direction and uh, indigenous cultures, well, they're sacrificed, they're gone. Uh, well, they're not gone. I'm not, I'm not trying to be flippant about that. They've been struggling for centuries in the Americas, for example, and other places. And they're not gone, but, uh, but, they're, uh, but they're, they're besieged. They're besieged by the left as much as they're besieged by the right. Uh, anyway, uh, I, a couple of other things that are said about technology besides the the chimera that it's going to somehow find the magic magic solution and, and save us and, and stop the eco crisis and everything else uh, technology empowers us well it's strange that the more technology in society the less people are empowered it connects us well of course the more technology there is in society every day, the less people are connected. If you mean connected in some non-machine way, in some real way, uh, the isolation in the U.S., for example, the number of one-person households just keeps going up and up and up. Uh, that's isolation. You could sit there on your computer uh, in, in, you know, living alone and 
And there was an interesting study that came out last summer uh, in the American Journal of uh, Sociology, 19-year study of how many friends people have. And I don't mean MySpace friends, you know, friends. We can all have hundreds of friends. And Anyway, they found that the average number of friends defined as people you confide in has gone from three to two in the U.S. in 19 years, 50% fewer friends. And the number of, of people who have no friends has tripled. But, of course, we're, we're wonderfully connected by the high-tech world. It's just getting better. We're just more connected every day. Every commercial will tell you that. Uh, you know, nobody, uh, nobody tires of saying that. Uh, well, not nobody, but uh, that's the propaganda on, on a basic level that uh, is just uh, delivered to everybody every minute. And technology is another one. It's, it's just there's so much variety and richness and exotic this and that. Well, it's, it's clear, and I use it too, it's very convenient for getting information. It's very quick. It's, it's, you know, it's kind of superficial, and we could discuss that. But uh, richness of, uh, and variety, this is the most standardized society. This is the most standardized world that has existed yet, and it keeps on getting more standardized. So, uh, gee, that didn't seem to be true either. You know, these are, these are pretty big lies. And I think uh, the actual life of people is, is the response as well. There's a reason why in some countries like the U.S., the levels of anxiety and stress and depression, loss of sexual function, in, uh, inability to sleep, and I mean, you know, the more and more technified society it doesn't become a richer place. It becomes a more, it's, it's an impoverished place. It's an empty place. There's the texture of living uh, is just being leached out.